Hello and welcome to Tea Time Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I've got my power puff girls with me today. Hey. Nimi <laughs> Dekombi and Ife. Hello, hey guys. How you doing? We are good. Hanging in there. How's Hanging in there. Social distancing. How is the lockdown? Five feet apart. That's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, we know this is an entertainment show and to get a picture of how an entertainer is feeling right now we're going to have waji on the line to let us know how things are going so um hello waji hi good morning good morning how are you doing today i'm very well thank you okay so um the pandemic has affected every sector right now and um, people are being locked in however being an entertainer in the entertainment industry you have to go out to make money basically so how are you coping in this situation well rightly said um it's affected a lot of things like i i remember the weekend after the amdc uh, we were supposed to have a concert and everything had to be cancelled because of social distancing. But now with the lockdown, the total lockdown, you know, the way some of us are coping is really channeling everything that we, um, we have online, you know. So you know that content right now still sells regardless, you understand, through YouTube channels, for some of us who have like blogs, and things like that. So the smart thing would have been before now, also making your reach um, online, you understand, in terms of like your YouTube channel, your Instagram, your Facebook as well, Facebook especially, you know. So that's what some people are doing now. Some people are doing like online content, you know, if you, for somebody like me who has like a website and you have like strong chances, that kind of thing, we can Instead of like um, get people to um, buy your merchandise or you know get like tickets on a very very low price for so basically like digitized concert. platforms now are the way to go. Yeah, that's really the that's really the best that we can do at the moment. Also, um, being an influencer is something that people need at the moment. Companies are looking out for. It people that have like a strong presence online so that business because students cannot stop listening. You get what I mean? So yeah, these are the different ways some people are facing. Yeah. Right. You to share your daily experience with us. A lot of people are struggling with, you know, keeping busy or having a structure of for the day. Um, so I, I want you to just shed some light on that. I, I'm sure the audience wants to know as well. Do you have days where you know you can't just figure out what to do with yourself, or is it pretty structured? Are you, do you have a routine? What, what's it like for you? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Um, it has like a bit of something. Um, I said uh, your day. We want. I want to find out what your day looks like. Um, do you have structure, or do you just you don't know what to do with yourself? Like, what does it look like when you wake up in the morning? Like, what is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, I don't think I have structure, to be honest. So, so I exercise, I go for a run, or my fitness trainer does like this person by seven online, I join in. Uh, I, I decided that this time, because I've been pushing back writing a book, so I decided that this quiet time I could start. So I'm, I've been writing my book, I'm on chapter one of writing my book. And um, yeah, so. There are little things that, you know, but it's not like the structure. When I remember one, I have a good one. I can tell you one, I have a good one. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing for. Right. Okay, let's talk about um, seeing a lot of celebrities coming out to tell the government how to do things and what we expect from them. I mean, it, a lot of your colleagues have um, spoken up. How would you rate the response of the government in this situation and what would you expect to see going forward? How would I rate what? How would you rate the response of the government towards this pandemic and what would you like to see going forward? Well, to be honest, um, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine yesterday and I was asking, I said, okay, so I see people really congratulating and thanking the governor. 
Now, I think the work that he's done is commendable, but the truth is the government is doing their job. You understand? Uh, this is why they were elected. They were elected to make, you know, govern the people and, you know, sort of create balance, whether it's working in, in, in situations like this uh, and um, even when the economy is booming, regardless. You know, so I think that he's doing a great job. What I really want to, or the people I really, really would love to commend outside the government are the private sector, people in the private sector that have been donating to make sure that, you know, people are okay, you know, and sort of, you know, financial donations and even whatever that we have, people have been doing a great job. Now, what I would really love to see is some sort of lasting plan for displaced people and people who have no um, shelter or who literally um, is in the slum. Uh, there's no there's no housing, nothing for them. Because the truth is, if the pandemic gets to that point, if this um, virus gets to that point, how do we safeguard them? You understand? So that's really what I want the conversation to be. Not just the, the people in the middle class and the and um, you know the high class, or people literally living in the slums. There are people who their their job is every day. You understand? They earn per hour. You know, the capital, the electrician that is really based on what they have done. Now that everyone, um, you know, quarantines, what? How do we make a living? What is the relief set in place to you know, make it, you know, make life a bit a little bit more comfortable for them? So that's that's uh, that's that's what I'd love to know more. I would have loved to talk more with you, but the reception is not quite clear. So we hope to have you on our subsequent edition. Thank you so much, Wajie, for your time. You're welcome. Have a good one. Okay. All right. Okay, so um, I mean, she's basically saying what everybody's saying right now. There needs to be some form of um, aid to help the people who cannot survive at this time. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the homeless, because she <coughs> specified on that. And I was wondering, because in other countries, there were provisions made for homeless people. And the truth is, Nigeria has a huge amount mm, of yeah. homeless people. So I was wondering, with this lockdown, it's easier for you to say there's a lockdown if there's a home for people to be locked in. Mm -hmm. But there are so many people that don't even have homes who sleep on the road. So yeah. what provision is going to be made for those people? And what con conversations? Because I've not seen any conversation about the homeless people in Nigeria. I've seen conversations about homeless people in other countries, but I've not seen particularly for those in Nigeria. So I'm hoping that, you know, that there would something be, will yeah. be done. something. And I worry because them. the NGOs are usually the ones that we look up to to take care yeah. of people like this. Um, remember, yes, I think it was yesterday we were talking about kids who are also um, in abusive homes. There's a, there's a lot of people that would be seriously affected, not by coronavirus, yeah, but because of the situation at hand. And I just remembered was recently that we had the explosion. Um, that yeah. already had a lot of people so homeless, people homeless. Um, not even just by um, choice, but or inherited to but by circumstances. So it's one of those things where I'm wondering, like, is there a plan for these people? There might be something going on. Nigerians do like to um, scream out the bad news more, and there actually could be actions going on, but we uh, we don't know. So I would like to hear about that. Like, for somebody who knows anything about that, you know, it should be something we're talking about on social media. Yeah. It was also very interesting for me to hear that YJ also doesn't have structure. I think a lot of people are kind of feeling bad <laughs> of not being able to, like, they just wake up, Sometimes you're. What you're, do I do for the yeah. day? Yeah, it's Some their fridge. Your fridge. Your fridge is their company. Some people going to bed at like six a.m. and sleeping during the day. Like yeah. there's no structure at all. House party is. And then watching people. movies. Exactly. Night. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's kind of nice to see that. Okay, somebody. Well, we're all in this together. Yeah. Um, uh, and then I don't think you always need to have structure. I feel like it's it's time to just relax. You can take your time. I think the only thing that you can consider is maybe your health, like trying to keep that in check. Mm. We're gonna be eating a lot more, so maybe try and work out or something. But either way, you don't. I don't think it's that much of a big deal. But it was nice to hear mm. that she also. But at the same that. time, like we mentioned yesterday, I think this is the time to um, do some things that would be useful for you at the long run. So right. read some books and um, research, learn yeah. new skills, and yeah. um, just keep yourself Take busy. Take courses, because some yeah. courses are now free. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the question I really wanted to ask her was like, what would we be seeing from her? 
after Afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll get her back to yeah. have that conversation. But still on what the government is doing, Nollywood actor and politician pleads with Buhari to provide an economic relief package for Nigerians. He tweeted, Dear President, um, please provide an economic relief package for Nigerians, even if it's 50,000 naira each, it will go a long way. People are hungry, locked down with no money, begging left, right and center. With a situation like this, it will be difficult to keep people at home. Also, Yule Doche encourages Nigerians to do a challenge that would get federal government attention instead of the ones that would not be beneficial. So um, he He's was subbing. basically throwing a sob at um, our very interesting challenges. I don't know. Yeah, those challenges are fun. Yeah. Those I mean, challenges people need to have fun, know, right? Yeah, it's, it's not every time that we must do something that would change yeah. the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, um, when I read the story, it was interesting to me because at first I was like, ah, I agree with you. But then I looked at it like critically mm. how many nigerians when last you do a national population census mm. how many nigerians are in a database how mm. are we going to distribute i got an 50, sms 000? from ncdc this morning you are a privileged quite, you know, so I, I feel like if there's going to be an age i mean that database you know, so for ncdc just, to send me an sms i was thinking about it okay yeah we're all screaming and clamoring for you know relief packages and you know this kind of stuff but how are they going to get to the like how is it going to be implemented mm. how is it going to get the nigerians that actually need yeah. these things i, I think I, as much as we talk about database and we are worried about it i think it's something that can really be done because we have local governments we our, our structure or our well structure even if we say we don't have structure it gets down to the grassroots at the end of the day we have councillors we have town hall meetings and all that and this is where um the obas and the traditional rulers can come to play so make the 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 package whatever it is available i'm sure with the right thinking cap on you will be able to to share it to those who really need it yeah. i don't think it's going to be that's such a big deal but i i know that if we have the database like you're talking about it yeah, it yeah, will be yeah, easier so right easy. but it's not like it is impossible it's not an impossible case it's not an impossible case to be quite frank. No, but, the, but the problem with the problem not having a database is how you regulate that so mm -hmm. if i can just come and say i'm really poor and i get yeah. 50, how do i know send my son mm -hmm. to go and do the same thing um, and even the way the the one I saw with the food distribution, I think it was executed really poorly, and everyone was gathering around. Yeah. There's a problem with that because they were trying to avoid, um, you know, crowd crowded spaces. But then you can't do door to door because they don't have doors. So it's like a very yeah. like um, sticky situation. situation. Yeah, and even um, the situation yesterday kind of made the whole avoiding crowd space very impossible futile because yeah. everybody had to be everybody out was yesterday. outside yesterday and personally i feel like I, I know that the decision of the federal government is based on trying to to um um, curb. um curb the whole flatten the curve right yeah. that's yeah. the um, phrase right yeah but not properly communicating with the governor of the states to know how to really transition to that stage yeah. without that panic of yesterday was yes. the wrong move and yeah. I, I hope that that has not even started the trouble we're trying to avoid mm. that's yes. my um, sincere hope right now yeah, because i went to the market yesterday and it was very very you know alarming because mm. there were a lot of people in the market the markets were being shut down so a lot of people were in a hurry to get rid of, you know, the perishable goods that they already had. So mm. most of them came outside. So there was just, I was struggling yeah. to mm. not like have, have any contact, contact with mm. somebody else. Are you it was, sure you did so really I did not. <laughs> I did not have <laughs> okay. any contact. I was so mm. angry because everybody was just, you know, and nobody even cared. It was yeah, like the coronavirus was not on anybody's mind. Everybody yeah. was just like, to stop I want to you yeah. know, get yeah. stuff. So I, I felt like if the government gave us maybe a two days notice, yeah. it would have been way better than the immediate. It was like a 24 hour yeah. notice, you know, so I, I felt like they could have done better. Okay. I hope that would come out of this stronger. Um, it's time for a quick break. But when we come back, we'll have more to discuss. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I decide that every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Alibaba. Right <laughs> oh, Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die, everybody feeling all right. I still make music and people are still buying. 
I'm sad and look myself minimal are you? Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people that got DM sometimes from Mala we like. Welcome back. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. TV host Toby Aking Bade recounts her coronavirus experience. The first part of her tweet read, I survived coronavirus, spent nearly two weeks indoors plus and in um, quarantine as my body fought it off. Yesterday, I took my first steps downstairs, um, headed straight to my garden, took a deep breath. Wasn't going to share this online, but I've been encouraged to share hope and good news and um, this is a good thing i think this is the second yeah. story i'm seeing as well yeah. mm -hmm. um the lady that actually had to go into the um, um facilities by the government is not as bad as you yeah and i'm happy that people are surviving however yeah. we've recorded just two deaths right now two is not just but yeah, yeah. It's, um, yeah, I think for me, particularly from this story, was because before the coronavirus, you know, became this serious, a lot of young people were like, oh, yeah. it's just like flu, it's not going to affect us like that. And she's just, she's 28 and yeah. she's healthy. She doesn't have any Online, medical yeah, yeah, yeah. conditions yeah. and everything. And when I read through the symptoms that she had, and I was like, I don't want this coronavirus. <laughs> I do not want it. Because she, she could not breathe, she could not walk, she was mm. weak. You know, she highlighted so many things that she said that this was the most... This was the most sick that she had ever felt. So I feel like a lot of people are still downplaying the seriousness yeah. of the coronavirus. They're like, hey, if it gets our immunity, we'll fight it. And I'm like, there are people that have died who did not have, you know, pre-existing yeah. medical no, it conditions. Plays, it plays both sides, actually. There yeah. are people who their immunity um, can actually fight it and they've been fighting it. But which is why symptoms. you have the asymptomatic people, yeah. right? And there are people who would really come down. It, it happens for every kind of disease, actually. There are people who, when their malaria starts there, you're like, okay this person is going to die and mm. all that and there's someone who will have malaria and they know they kind of can tell you i'm not feeling very good True. but they can still go about their, their yeah. daily activities yeah, so you don't it's going to hit you yeah you don't know where you fall so yeah. you have to be to careful not, yeah because and, uh, all the things that she highlighted i was like i do not want this yeah because because i feel like that I, I, more and more as time goes i can understand why they call it a novel virus because there's something mischievous about it like yes. we don't know what it looks at anymore. We've seen a 102 year old lady get healed Survive. from that. We've seen a 73 year old with underlining issues get healed from that. We've seen 18 year old healthy child. We've seen a toddler getting um, killed from coronavirus. So it feels like it's one of those things where you just can't really be too sure. Yeah. I really, truly appreciate this lady yes. sharing this story. And the other lady, um, so the lady who the founded lady End to Rape. Yes, um, yeah. yes. yes uh, I really appreciate it. In our culture, we don't do that. We don't share things. You ask what you did to succeed and I'll tell you it's the grace of God. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 but like, tell me more. Um, so it's it's definitely out of the culture to do that. Um, and she's rising above st the possible stig Stigma, stigmatization yeah. that she could True. get going forward. Um, so it, it's a big kudos to her. The good I also thing is liked, she's negative now. Exactly. Yeah, she's negative now. Exactly. So I'm glad that, first of all, she's opening up to share such a horrible experience, but that there is also victory in that. And it's super encouraging for us. Yeah, we've, we don't know where people will fall on the scale, but it's still really good news. Yeah. And I also mm -hmm. think it answers um, Victoria Yama's questions. Mm -hmm. Why are we not hearing anything from the so-called oh, no. recovered The other lady, the founder of n rape actually yeah. answered her question yeah, that's what because saying. she gave she... you steps and what was going on. And, in the, and what in happens the, yeah, in the isolation so. center. The mm -hmm. fact that they even gave them good food and mm -hmm. everything. I was like that. So. When I read the lady stretch, the stand to end with, I was, I had hope. I was yeah. like, that, yes. But then, she's actually a privileged person. She is. So you also have to know that let's not be, everybody might yeah. be entitled let's to that kind of yeah. care and all that. And I also wanted to say that um, there was news that Prince Charles, who tested positive, is now negative. Is now negative. Yeah. Within a week. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are no, like no, no. You, you know, they did not actually um, do the test early enough. Their, okay. their contact with whoever gave them the virus was around tenth of March or there about ninth oh, of March. Okay. So the so the test was done to... late. So it's possible okay. as the asymptomatic person, he's been fighting it, and hmm. so it's quite. Because a lot of people were saying, <laughs> please, if there is a hey. if there is a vaccine or mm -hmm. if there is a drop, or if we should use this now, if we should not just be only privileged people. We don't have that information yet. But moving on real quick to the final story we can take on this episode, Nollywood filmmaker. Charles Opalike has started a social media challenge to raise 15 million naira to help the country deal with the coronavirus pandemic. The filmmaker shared a video on Instagram um, challenging media personality 
took him back and was celebrity photographer George Okoro, among others, to support in realizing the targeted fund. He wrote, we want to raise 15 million to support NCDC and people who have been hit by the economic situation caused by this pandemic. All I need is 60 people. Mm. I think it's commendable. It mm -hmm. is. It's a very good thing because another thing we need to realize is uh, during this period is for those who are privileged, I, one of the reasons why I think it's commendable is because he knows that he's a privileged person. Yeah. He knows that he knows privileged people. Right. And he's, go, he's taking a step. He's going out of his way to make sure that he raises money and he's thinking of this, you know, um, underprivileged people. So I hope that going forward, like beyond the coronavirus pandemic, that's just mm -hmm. what I want to say. I feel like it's very commendable, but I hope that going forward beyond after we are done, with the coronavirus, that this is something that, that other people can <laughs> emulate, which is why um, on this table I was saying that I don't necessarily frown upon celebrities posting charitable things that they do on right. social media because it can inspire and it will yeah. inspire people to step. I mean, yeah. come on, if he did not um, come on social media, probably you will not have the 60 people yeah, exactly. in the No, so he so hasn't gotten them, he just put out the challenge. Uh -huh. so, so he has still put out I, the challenge. I, I so think it, it, personally, it if it's good, I, I like it, but I hope that he had a conversation with Tokyo Makewa and George Okoro before, before putting them putting on the spot because the spot. this situation has put a lot of people we call privileged people in a very tight situation yeah. because yeah. before now they've had a lot of people they need Which to send been. money to on a regular 50k 20k 30k 100k and see I need to stock up and you cannot say no because you know these people eat from hand to mouth so they need to actually have some form of funds so these people you are hoping on trust me I know a couple of them they have had to carry the burden this period they have become the government of the people so mm -hmm. if you're going to call them out like that I would kind of like you to have a conversation to, with them yeah. to even know if they have the 250,000 to give up because trust me it is not easy regardless of how we look at people and feel like they have it all put together it's possible that dropping 250,000 at this time will be a big deal so that's where I'm looking but, at it from but however yeah. yes I love the initiative but I hope that these two people that he called out first he already had a back end conversation with them for them to say I am comfortable yeah, with because this. Because from his video what he said was that he's going to nominate his very close friends yeah. Yeah. so they are it's not like oh we know each other in the industry let me yeah. nominate you they are close buddies so even before I even started this initiative I'm very sure you already told them that yeah. this is what I, I want hope to so. do. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I mean I'm also hoping that because, because it's supposed to be like a ripple effect so involved. Toke is supposed to um, nominate other people, right? So I'm okay. hoping that as they keep going forward, they should like have conversations to too and say, I'm of doing course. this, can I, you I, do I, this? I, I, that that's the right you, thing I don't to think do. I, uh, well, I mean, if somebody um, nominated me on social media, I can decide to say no. Like, I yeah. can't afford yeah. it. Because... In this kind of nomination. It's not, it's not post your picture challenge. <laughs> <laughs> no, the truth of the matter is that when it, it com when it comes to money, and this is just... I feel like I'm not the only person that has this mindset, especially if you actually work for your money. Mm -hmm. um, you can't control how I spend it. Um, and I, I, the, the, so the, the, first of all, I can, I, if you nominate somebody, they can tell you that, okay, at this moment, I only have 20K. I hope that's okay. Or I only have 10K. But I don't really believe, and I understand where you're coming from, but I really don't believe that celebrities don't have money to offer. They it don't have any possible. money to offer. Especially the celebrities that are being mentioned here. Ugh. Let's be real. Okay. Like, yes, there's packaging. Mm -hmm. There's packaging, I agree. Mm. I agree. But you cannot tell us we don't have wealth. <laughs> that is... Uh, <laughs> mm, and, I don't know. No, no, no. Hold on. Having it is different from having it to give. So, I mean, let me use the token market for example. I mean, I don't know her personally, but I'm saying based on my experience in the industry and actually working close to the people that are, you would say, in the cadre of token marketing, there are times where the account is actually blank. There are yeah, times true. where what you have is your running cost. And your running cost as a celebrity is not a joke because yeah. your, your living style already is a big deal. And you have to consider that you have to maintain that for I this. It's 14 for days you. right now, right? But you don't know how long we are going for. You exactly. have to also be prepared for that. True. You're running on your inverter. You're running your generator. Like you said, you have people working for you. You need to take care of. Yes. So sometimes they don't have liquid yeah. to push out. All they have built for themselves is that comfort. And of course, some streams of income that will keep coming or um, as time goes on, yeah. that's for those that have invested. But if you haven't, and all you know is to take care of yourself, there's a, every possibility that you would not have even 50,000 to yeah. give to anybody and because you have to take care to of you. And that's why it's turn it down. Like, I feel like there's a lot of challenges that have gone on. There's a lot of things that, you know, people have wanted to do together.
give up or you don't have to. I still think it's a good thing for of him to still tag as yeah, many people. Definitely. And I don't think you have to have a relationship with them to give them um, head notice. Like, this is what I'm doing. This is my initiation, initiation guys. And I can say thank you. This is really awesome. I hope you get your we money, but I'm not up. part of yeah. the people that will donate that okay. money. Okay, that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. I remember you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by visiting and subscribing to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my co-anchors, Ife Omai and Nimi Dekombi and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay home and stay safe.